Well, I think now is a good time to review our events in the parklands policy because we've seen a, a, quite a change in the landscape and the, the use of the parklands in the city in the last five years. We've seen um, the advent of new events and we've also seen that in conjunction with the, the uh, advent of new small bar licences which have really changed the landscape. The Council and the Parklands Authority have an exciting vision for the future of the parklands. Uh, we see it as a globally recognised park system surrounding and permeating our city which is central to our identity. So it's quite exciting, it's all around us and it's a part of us. And the parklands are the stage for state significant events and very intimate events like, like weddings here in Hamaji Gardens. The big question is how, where and what types of events do we want to see grow in the parklands? Uh, the parklands has a diverse range of stages potentially for events from our ma major event spaces through to beautiful formal parks even to more natural spaces. So there's an opportunity now to look widely around the parklands and see where the new and emerging events could happen. Some of, some of the challenges are around literally scheduling in events across the city. Um, there's a high demand. We, we are getting new uh, proposals and applications all the time. Um, so it is, that is certainly a challenge, is, is finding suitable venues to spread out those events across the city. Some of the things to address those challenges, I think, is looking holistically at all our parklands and actually probably opening our, our, our eyes a little bit wider to perhaps what we've sort of got used to as maybe the main event locations and actually starting to, uh, without being too prescriptive, but actually have some broad guidelines around events and actually thinking about, well, you know what, this location is really suited to events of this sort of nature and this location is suitable to events of this nature, for example, which will make that sort of decision-making process a lot um, clearer for not only us as council, but for the community and event organisers. So obviously um, through the parklands, there are literally hundreds of people that um, walk and ride their bikes through the parklands each day to get to the city. So when big events are on um, and they're putting up fencing and signposting and sand across paths, etc., it can have a real impact on people and it's about trying to encourage event operators to work with council to provide those opportunities and to encourage people to come on foot or bike which could include things like um, providing bike parking at events um, and in public transport we can look at providing information on um, bus services, train services, where they go, what times they run and also promoting use of um, council's free city connector bus service that connects different precincts and event spaces within the city. Shared use of event space is a really important consideration. Events that are held in the parklands can range from two people having a picnic through to a, you know, an event with 40, 50,000 people at it. We need to make sure that the parklands are available for everyone to enjoy the way they want to enjoy them. So we've got a real obligation to make sure we're working with event organisers and with state government to space out events so that we uh, avoid contested space, crowd clashes, the sort of things that can result in public safety issues. We really want to work with event organisers to make sure that all events in the future are enjoyable and safe for everybody. Well I think this is a really unique opportunity for all users of our city to have a say in how we use our parklands, be they event organisers, city residents or city businesses. Um, it's a real opportunity to join us in this journey, to come along, to have a say, uh, in relation to how we shape the future of the events in our parklands.